Hey guys, welcome back. So there's a couple things I want to do before we continue. Um, so right now, if you've noticed our error handlers, we're sending in the status codes. So I think we should start sending status codes uh, with each um, each response. So to do that, you just do add a status method here and you send in the, the code. So 200 is gonna be the default, the okay status code. Uh, and then 201 is the special one for creating, or 201 is basically means something has been created. And then also in our register, we're not taking into account if the user's already been created or if you're basically registering as someone that already exists. So there's a simple thing in here. We just, uh, the error code that Mongo gives us is code, what was it? It's 11000. And then we just do an error.message equals sorry that username is already taken and that way it'll send in the error to here and then our error handler will take care of the rest uh, just to make sure <clears throat> we're actually going to change this error code to 400 which is the standard error because um, 500 means that our server is broken 400 just means that something went wrong Okay, so that's fixing our register function. Um, all right, in our login function, uh, for security purposes, the if anything goes wrong here, we don't actually want um, whoever to log in to know what exactly went wrong. So to fix that, we just uh, throw a generic error here. So error.message equals invalid username password so whatever error happens it just um, it'll always have the same message here all right and with that out of the way we're gonna go take a look at authentication and the strategy that we're gonna use uh, for this application is JSON web tokens which you can find out more at this website which is just jwt.io and what basically happens is that we're gonna send a token that looks like this that will hold the payload so it looks something like this except name here will actually look like something else so this middle part it actually holds the data that we're sending and then these two um, other hash strings are used to decode this. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, and the reason why we're using JSON Web Tokens instead of something like cookies or sessions is that it makes it a lot easier to handle uh, using a front end like React or Angular, which is what we're gonna, which is the goal of this project. So. So let's install JSON Web Tokens. Um, let's see. First, <coughs> change directory into your server, and then clear this. And we're gonna npm install. What do we need? We need JSON Web Token, and I believe that's it. Let me let me see if we need anything else. Um, no, that's that's it. So. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just import it right here. I'm actually gonna import it up here. Um, the, the reason why I import things this way is mostly of a strategy that I adopted from working with Angular. So you, at the top most part, you import all, all of your dependencies followed by a space. And then afterwards you, you import all of your own stuff. So 
So this one will just be a JSON web token, and then and then the second line is my database, which comes from the model directory. Okay, so we just need to generate a token and send it to the user, um, which is pretty simple. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm forgetting something. Oh, right. We need a secret. And where do I call the secret? I just, yeah, just secret. Um, like I said earlier, uh, the environment variables, the .env file, is where you hold your uh, secret keys. Um, also, I'm adding in port to, because where your application is hosted, the default port will change depending on the environment. For example, Heroku uses port 8080. Um, and then it depends on where you host it, basically. And then the database URL, I'm putting it here also. Um, just because it's easier to share your code with your teammates if you end up working with the team. Or for anyone else that ends up using it because not everyone has access to your uh, what is this called local database but they could instead make their own database and populate it um, with stuff basically and then for our secret uh, it could just be any string but this is the secret that we're gonna use to uh, for JSON web token to read and decode as well as encode all the data. Um, I'm just gonna go with this is a temporary secret, which is cool. All right, back to the auth handler. We just need to generate a uh, JSON web token. Let's see, I'm inside of an async function, which is good, and we're gonna put it right here. So just const token equals JWT dot sign and we're signing the ID and the username and we're gonna send in the secret. Secret. And then we're gonna send out the <coughs> the token. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing for login. Uh, do, 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 do. I believe I want to put it inside here. Yeah, only to generate the token if if it's a valid user. So, cons token equals jwt dot sign. Here we're also sending in this ID and username, and process dot env dot secrets. Then that is our environment variable. So env refers to the .env file secret. And then now we just need to test this. So let's start up Postman, which is here. I should have started this up before the video, but that's OK. All right, all the startup messages go away. Okay, and we're gonna, oh, no, go away. And we're gonna go sign in with username Kelvin and password is password. So, oh, right, one more thing. I have to start off the Mongo server. So, Mongod. Okay, cool. Send, oh yeah, forgot to start up the server. NPM start. Yeah, I'm forgetting things. Um, error is thrown. Cannot find bcrypt JS. That's odd. I'm pretty sure we added that. I guess not. All right. Well, let's go install that. Install bcrypt JS. And. Let's start the server again. Everything should work. It looks correct. <clears throat> Log in and send. 
ID, username. Why is the token not being sent? Let's see. Oh, I'm not sending out the token here. Let's check if I'm sending it here. It's correct. And I'm actually going to put this on multiple lines just to be consistent with the login routes. So say, yep, and login. There we go. The ID, username, and the token. All right, and we're going to use this token to create middleware to decode and see if it's the correct user. In the, in the path that requires knowing who you are, basically. Um, yeah, I think I can do that right now. So we're going to start making middleware now. Let's kill the server. And close all these files. All right. Ugh. Okay. Um, touch middlewares auth.js. Yeah. Um, I know it might be a little confusing that a lot of these files are the same names, but I'm doing it for consistency and it is a good practice to have things basically pointing in the right places. Um, in the next project, if we do one, I will show a different file structure that might make things more clear, but for now, just bear with me. But here we go. So what do we need for this middleware? Uh, we need the JWT. Require JSON web token. And we're just basically going to make middleware to um, to decode the, the token and uh, yeah, basically just decode the token. Um, let's do this. Exports equals require or yeah, request response next. So basically the same uh, same thing as all other express middlewares and function handlers. It looks pretty similar. Um, so at the so we're gonna just do an if else. Here, next error, no token provided. I think that's a good enough error. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what are we checking? We are checking if the token is inside of the headers. So, authorization authorization make sure I spell that right okay so let's get the token it is going to be coming from headers dot authorize actually let's let's go with dot notation here instead of bracket notation um dot splits I'll explain this in a minute and then we're going to verify the token token with the same secret that we encoded it with. So secret. And it takes a callback function decoded, which I should have. Whatever, we'll just go with it. Fail to authenticate token. There. And then decode goes next. So, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's go through it one, step by step. So, first, we're going to, in this middleware, we're going to check the headers for the authorization key 
and that's where we're gonna store the token and this little magic here is basically saying that it's gonna be a string <clears throat> and where the token is the second part of that string separated by a space which by convention the tokens look like this it's prefixed with bear space and then token which looks kind of like that but we just want this part so this split and bracket notation one uh, turns this into an array and we get rid of uh, this part the very first part now we verify or we use JSON web token to verify if the token is is an actual token if if it isn't we send an error so basically authentication failed and then if no token is provided we also send an error now here is where we actually have a token and we are going to attach the property decoded onto the request object and then we send we um, was it? initiate the next function so this part basically means that we're sending the user's data to the next function to be used um, the reason why I like to do it this way is that uh, you could have one or it allows you to have only one middleware for both authentication and authorization so if the if we only need to know that if the user is logged in this is enough and if we need to know the specific user that's logged in we can access the decoded property of the request object okay I hope that's not too confusing um, I'm gonna save this really quick clear and then let's add it to our git version so git status git add everything git commits added authentication okay so like I said this this might be a little confusing without actually seeing it in action so that's what we're gonna do next it's just for for you to see this in action we need to create all the following pull routes basically making this schema useful the pull schema and that's what we're going to do in the next video so we're going to add uh, basic CRUD functionality so create update delete and then specifically we're going to start voting on polls and then after that our REST API our, basically our server is done and then we can move on to the client <clears throat> which we're going to use react alright and that should be it for now I'll see you in the next